Welcome to the complete Elver Guide. This spans from the beginning of the map until the Nelson boss. If you get stuck throughout your adventure, follow the timestamps below to help you out. This tutorial should work both on PC and on console. I do want to mention that the Elver Easter Egg takes a long time in default survival due to the grind, so there will be spawn ideas at the top right if you do not want to grind for it. The first thing you will need is a sacrificial scripture to get to the floating island. First, craft a component. A component requires a defibrillator battery from the hospital or mall, a gyroscope from demolition site or fire station, two tape that can be found throughout the map, and finally a U-Phone 14 from GameStart in the mall. After you craft a component, find a graphics card from GameStart in the mall, a military radio from military locations or a mega zombie, two metal cans, five rope, two chemicals, and four green crystals from the big crystal and mall. You also will need a blowtorch and crafting three. From there, craft a sacrificial scripture and go to town or gas station. Go over to the sacrifice area and insert the scripture and then go through the portal. From here, you will need to do all of Rainwright's quests and all of Matt's quests in order to continue. I will be showing them mostly in order, but feel free to accept them all and then do them at your own pace. I will be doing all of Rainwright's quests first, and so the first quest is to kill 250 zombies, but don't worry about that one right now. Next up is to do a horde beacon. Up on screen is the crafting recipe for an elven horde beacon, however I am just going to spawn it in since it takes a really long time to grind for it. Go to Ghost Valley in order to do the horde beacon. Before starting, I want to mention that these horde beacons are very difficult. You don't want to die and lose your horde beacon progress. If you are, for some reason, doing this in survival, make sure you have lots of healing and tons of ammo. If you are playing with cheats on, spawn in the thick heat wave, a bunch of medkits, and a bedroll as you may fail a few times. I was able to do the horde beacon with a weapon I found on the ground, but I did use multiple medkits in the process, and if you're having trouble completing it, comment down below and I can give you some more details to try and help out. But for now, here are the tips and tricks I have for doing this horde beacon. Continuing on, assuming that you were able to complete the first of many horde beacons, it is now time for the first collector quest. For this you will need all 6 key cards. The green key card is here, here is where the purple one is, here is where the blue one is, the red one is in a room in this building. The white key card is here. And the black key card can be a little bit difficult to get, but it's right here and I promise it's possible. Finally, finish killing off your remaining zombies and head back to the floating island. Turn in the quests and guess what? You have to kill 500 zombies and do two more horde beacons. If you have cheats on, I recommend grabbing a thick heat wave and just doing 5 horde beacons for the 500 zombies. After mass murdering a bunch of zombies and horde beacons, you need to tear down 4 wanted posters. For the first one, you need to pick up this badge at town, and then tear down the poster in the building. Next go to the police station, then go to demolition site, then go to hospital, and then go to park. After turning in the quests, you gotta do two more for him, kill 750 zombies, and three horde beacons. I think you know what to do from here. Once you complete those two, you can finish the quest worthy. After that, talk to this fancy green guy over here. He will cause some mass destruction in the background, and then you can talk to him again, and then go through this portal with some runic fossils. If you don't have any, buy them here. If you are still using this walkthrough, I recommend trying this part out for yourself since it's really fun. But if you're stuck, here's a sped up version of me doing it.
By the way, do not talk to Nelson, or you will have to restart the puzzle. Now talk to Big J, and then go through the teleporter. Now it is time for Matt's quest. I recommend buying a fishing rod Mark II before leaving the floating island. Fisher Zero requires two grenades and a fish sandwich. Fish up a puffer fish, and then, using a carrot, you can craft fish meat and a grenade. From there, get two bread, cook the meat, and then you have the sandwich. You also need one more grenade, so I recommend just straight up fishing for another puffer fish. Before starting the farmer quest, I recommend upgrading your agriculture. Farmer 1 requires you to get 30 cloth seeds by either farming them or just collecting them around the map. Next is Planter 1. Plant the box on the highway here. Go back and turn them in. Next is Planter 2. Plant the box here in dorms. And then run over here into the train station and plant it here. Now for Farmer 2. Farm up 20 wheat to make it into a seed bundle. After those two seed bundles grow, you will have enough to craft a hay bale. Finally, go fishing for a tryhard fish. Once done, go back to Matt. Get the next three tasks and start by farming 30 dragon fruits. Afterwards, go back to fishing for two baby fish. Now you have three packages to deliver. There are two packages to deliver in mall. Here in the back, and up here in the hardware store. The last one is in the dead zone. You need a respirator mask in order to go into the dead zone. To make a respirator mask, you need two chemicals, six cloth, ten rubber, and a respirator filter. In order to make that respirator filter, you need two tape, one mesh, and a component. Once you have the mask, run to this location and place the box here. Now, go back to Matt and do the final fishing quest by fishing up some hypertech fish. Once you complete the quest, Big J will have his quest ready. For the first Big J quest, you must go down into the dead zone again and grab the Sword of Light blueprint. That can be found by following the path on screen. Once you have the blueprint, grab a golden swordfish which is made from a swordfish and a magenta crystal. Get a cyan crystal which is made from four green crystals, four magenta crystals, and rubber. And finally, get an upgraded staff using a staff and a green crystal. Now you can go craft the Sword of Light. Go back to the island and turn it in. And then simply talk to Big J until you complete Punisher 2. Start Punisher 3 and, if you're in survival, prepare for multiple challenges as you will need to go through multiple dimensions. Otherwise, click on the teleporter under Big J and start. I recommend doing this part on your own because it is way more fun when you do it on your own but I will show you exactly how to do it for if you get stuck.
that is the end of the Easter egg. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like and subscribe and comment down below if you had any troubles.